every day we are confronted with challenges of corruption in Nigeria. To pretend that it does not exist is to tow the wrong path. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your favorite program, Voice of the Priest Against Corruption. It is a program of the Priest Peace and Justice Initiative, PPJ, mobilizing Christians against corruption in Nigeria with strong support from the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. My name is Oche Ocheme and I'm your host on this wonderful radio program. Today we shall be looking at a very important topic, indispensability of accountability and the Pentecostal system of leadership. When I return, I'll be introducing my guest. Don't go anywhere. My guest today is Pastor Christopher Iboro Akaiso, who became a very passionate follower of Christ in 1990. He was an active member of the vibrant Nigeria Fellowship of Evangelical Students, NIFES. Dear listeners, join me as we welcome Pastor Chris. Sir, you're welcome. Well, my brother, I uh, uh, really want to start by saying uh, as my opening salvo that I commend you for such a subject as this one, indispensable in any society or system. I want to thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Pastor Chris. Uh, th- this is a question I have repeatedly asked almost uh, every of my guests. What is your view regarding the issues of corruption in the church? especially as we regard the Pentecostal community. I mean, one thing that have always confronted me on this program, especially when I do the live edition, is the fact that people deny the existence of corruption. As a matter of fact, they believe that corruption should not be mentioned in institutions as holy as the church, in quotes. What are your takes, sir? Um, well, my brother, I, uh, this is a huge, a very huge uh, question, if you ask me, uh, that would take so many uh, sessions to deal with. Albeit, I shall suffice as much as possible. Uh, corruption, as far as I'm concerned, is uh, a huge subject. It is uh, as old as human history itself. You know, I, I, you are a Bible student, as a student of the Bible, as I am. Uh, according to Romans 6:16, 6, when Adam sinned, uh, uh, Adam was more or less on behalf of mankind, pledging to be servant to corruption, to futility, and if you like, to sin. And uh, according to Romans, I think uh, I believe chapter 8, verse 20, God in His justice uh, and righteousness, Adam having pledged on behalf of mankind uh, to be subject to corruption, had to hand over. Adam and the you know entire mankind and entire creature to corruption. So if you ask me, the entire world is legally, I repeat, legally under the hold of corruption. My views may be a little bit different from uh, others, but th- this I believe are genuine views from the Bible. Uh, the entire world is legally under the hold of corruption. However, with regards to the church, especially the Pentecostal, uh, you know, uh, 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 persuasion. The expectation should be uh, that the church should be above corruption. Now, this is because when God handed over the world over to corruption, like I have said in Romans 8.20, uh, the scripture makes us to know that he did so in hope that the sons of God shall be liberated uh, from uh, corruption, uh, you know, into the liberty of the sons of God and on the heels of the uh, liberation of the sons of God into liberty, the entire creation uh, uh, should, uh, you know, subsequently also be liberated. So the church is a composite word, in my opinion, describing a society of people who have been delivered from corruption and therefore should live above it. But unfortunately, uh, there is so much corruption in the church uh, in contemporary times, especially in what has been called the Pentecostal community of persuasion. My view is that, you know, uh, dealing with uh, corruption in the Pentecostal circles is an uphill task, some as uh, same as it is in other circles. For me, the reason for that is simple, if I may just chip in. The reason is denominationalism under which Pentecostalism stands as a section is a flaw. As a system, uh, it is uh, anti-biblical truth and uh, cannot completely overcome corruption in its present state. This is my opinion. Thank you so much, Pastor Chris. That that was a very enlightened uh, response. Uh, I mean, you've, you've, you've opened a perspective 
I have either or not thought of. Uh, I mean, no doubt. I'm sure my my uh, listeners are really really uh, having a wonderful time as this. All, all right, sir. My next question: Has the church, uh, in terms of putting system, has the church done well enough in terms of putting system in place to ensure accountability? This is a a very serious question, uh, and we must be as honest as possible about it. Uh, you know, as honest as, as uh, you know, it requires. Uh, uh, my answer will be short on this one. My answer is simply uh, uh, yes and no. Uh, and I'll tell you the reason why. You see, uh, when you say the word church, uh, again, my opinion may differ from others. Uh, you are basically referring to uh, a very huge term in, in, in my thinking. I teach uh, uh, in my conferences that there are different kinds of church today, uh, so different that in discussing church, we have to narrow it down to which. Uh, I believe there are four major churches, the Akabo Church, the Kabo Church, the Ikabo Church, uh, and the Semi Kabo Church. So to answer your question, uh, the correct answer would be yes and no the reason is that all churches fall under these four different kinds so yes the, the Kabo church there is a kind of church in existence the Kabo church which has done well in terms of uh, putting some systems at least some considerable systems in place to ensure uh, accountability and no uh, the answer is also no because uh, the uh, churches i will call uh, a Kabo church has not done well. Uh, neither has the uh, Semika Board and the Ikabo Church. You know, uh, the truth is that those in these uh, uh, last categories uh, or groups that I uh, mentioned, uh, you know, cannot embrace the uh, instrumentation of accountability. They are not doing enough, and uh, we'll be elaborating on this as we go on. Thank you. Thank you so much for that uh, insightful response. There is an argument that accountability promotes servant-like leadership in keeping with the pastoral mandates to watch over the flock. How true is this? It would be so unfortunate uh, for anyone uh, in whatever hierarchy you find yourself in church to discountenance uh, the fact that um, accountability is um, one of the uh, uh, you know uh, uh, ingredients that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, necessary to uh, uh, make us the servant uh, leader that uh, God wants us to, to become. I think that uh, a major problem we have in the church is uh, uh, we put leadership in the place against uh, Paul's admonition to Timothy. Paul told Timothy not to put anybody in leadership who is a baby, uh, you know, who is not come to the place of maturity and uh, this is not a program for that maybe some other time there are four levels of christian faith and uh, uh, the very first level is the baby level and there's so many ministers on the pulpit today if they are genuinely called uh, of god and and, it, and it's so unfortunate uh, uh, that that is uh, the case uh, the problem is many do not really understand one what church is and two what leadership is if you don't understand what church is you can't understand what leadership in the church is and you can't appreciate accountability um, let me quickly uh, get it to the question so i don't take much time uh, uh, um, for me accountability uh, i would describe it as uh, the debt uh, one owes uh, to give explanations for his actions and to take responsibility for them if need be. Uh, leadership in the kingdom is uh, simply servanthood uh, as far as I'm concerned. You know, one time uh, Jesus was speaking to his disciples and he said, you know, in the world, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the people in the world rule and lord it over, their leaders lord it over them. But in the kingdom and amongst you, the true disciples of uh, Jesus Christ, it must not be so. So, so in the kingdom, in the world, leadership is rulership, but in the kingdom, leadership is servanthood, you know. Now, this is my perspective about uh, leadership, and then you will see how it connects with accountability, uh, making you, you know, a servant leader. I, I, I consider the fact that the master so loved his sheep that he left his glory in heaven to come and die for them. 
then he chose you or chose me or chose us as leaders to serve him by serving his people and he says in the scriptures that he would come back and ask us for account on how we served his loved ones all right sir i see you as a leader in so many fronts what model have you adopted in your accountability process that other leaders who have realized the need for accountability can learn from to ensure a smooth accountability process in their own ministry as well sir well um uh, my, my brother uh, let me be very straight uh, on this one uh, um, possibly uh, you know maybe i'm just a bit uh, conscious of time i don't know how much time i've been taking uh, uh, straight to the point my, my own model uh, that i have adopted i would simply describe as uh, the community model uh, you know what we have today in the contemporary church uh, can best be described as uh, the denominational model of uh, uh, leadership and uh, for me uh, if you like uh, me to be very plain with you like i've been saying uh, denominationalism is subject to corruption and it is anti-accountability in the long run that's what denominationalism is you know and uh, uh, perhaps what is a little shift what is like a little shift away from denominationalism that we have today is what has been called networking model you know um, yeah networking model has some uh, you know uh, uh, advantages here and there over the denominationalism but it's still a far cry to uh, 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 from what uh, God really commands in the Bible I have been in the denominational uh, 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 setting I have been in the network setting so I know precisely what I'm talking about you know all this time of my uh, you know preaching the gospel by the message of God um, what I think uh, the Bible uh, really recommends, which I have imbibed as my model of church and leadership, is what I would describe, like I said, the community model. This is what leaders who see the indispensability of accountability uh, should adapt. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, I would just like to say so, and then uh, maybe as we make progress, we may uh, have time to expand shit on this. But basically, uh, the model that is in existence is denominational. Sir, so what are your final words? To the pentecostal family and i mean to the body of christ my final words to um, well the uh, pentecostal community is a composite one you know uh, uh, it's a composite one my final word to them would be uh, uh, simply that uh, uh, they should respond to the cry of the spirit and if you ask me what the cry of the spirit is i would simply tell you that the cry of the spirit in these times is simply constructive re-engineering in the contemporary church you know uh, this would be uh, my final words uh, to them it's a composite one you know god has not called his church pentecostals anywhere in the bible uh, neither has he called it any denomination anywhere in the bible he has called us sons he has called us saints he has called us members of the household of uh, god you know a uh, uh, royal priesthood pastor chris akaiso i cannot thank you enough we we'll look forward to having you and um, dear listeners if you have been with us of course that has been pastor chris akaiso who has done justice to this topic thank you so much for listening until i come your way next week my name remains ochel cheme saying be accountable shun corruption god bless you for more information you can visit our website www.priestassembly.org or email us at info at priestassembly.org, Twitter at priestassembly.org, Facebook, facebook.com slash priestassembly, and of course, we're on Instagram at priestassembly. Phone number 0905-159-0284. 0905-159-0284. God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. Why my people just suffer? Why we must we get like the rich be getting richer, the poor getting poorer? Tell me what's the